Um, well, I eventually did leave um, the college to do music full time, which was one of the lowest points of my life. I'd, I'd say rock bottom for me. Um, well, almost. I basically had a few years of, of really hard times floating around and really indulging in drugs. Um, and I eventually did sign to a small label, uh, Doghouse Records, and they, um, I started to make this record. And my whole life had been about making a masterpiece of some sort. And I was like, this is going to be my, my masterpiece. And like, so I sat down to do this uh, with my, and since I was playing everything except for drums on the record, it was basically me and the producer of the record alone in his apartment for like what turned out to be six months to a year working on this record. And um, it was one of the most stressful, it was the most stressful time in my life ever. I was constantly telling myself, and we had a lofty concept record. It was like a concept record, so we were trying to make it like a, a musical and a record at the same time. And that was like almost impossible to do because we had not that much money. And we were, we were stuck in this this apartment and I was still smoking tons and tons of weed and eventually like I literally snapped um, during the, the process of making the record. I thought I was being filmed, I thought I was on the Truman Show essentially, you know, it was, I thought that my entire life had been s staged for me and, and that's, that was my first manic break uh, of bipolar. It was, um, it was in Brooklyn and I walked out onto the Brooklyn street and I was like, this is a movie set. Everyone here has been placed to react to everything I do. And um, it explained why I felt so alienated my whole life. It explained to me at the time why my life felt like this endless test that I had never been able to pass. Um, and that was my answer. You know, my mind, my bipolar freaked out, you know, mind was, was telling myself, the reason that you felt this way is because it's all been a movie the entire time. And then what did you do? I took a walk through Brooklyn, uh, confronting people, um, and um, like what, how? I would just be like, uh, basically playing, it, it's, it's sort of a complex thing that was constantly evolving in my head because I was in this manic state, but I would, you know, let's say there's a guy selling you know, pirated DVDs on the side of the street, I would just, you know, grab one from him and just be like, I know what you're doing. I know you're not really, you're, you're paid to be here. And, you know, he'd be like, no, man, I'm selling pirated DVDs. And, like, hit me with it, hit me with the DVD. And it went on like that for, like, the whole day. I wandered around until, you know, I got beat up a little bit and ended up in a hospital. Eventually, you know, they called my parents because I told them, you know, I wanted to say goodbye to my parents because I thought I was being executed at the time for just being a bad person. <laughs> it was, I think, one of the most frightening moments of my life, and I thought that these people, it was basically, I felt that I had been bred because of my background and because of how I have lived my life, that I've been bred to, to be an example of what a person should not be, and that I was now being executed for that, for, for becoming this because I'd given up on myself and because I had become... And, and since the first album was all about that promiscuous period in my life and, and giving up on hope, you know, that writing that album was, in, in, in essence, the ultimate, um, uh, the ultimate sort of terrible act and that I was, I was to be executed, that I'm like a potential Hitler for, for, for preaching this emptiness to kids that I, that's what I wanted to, you know, show all the kids who are listening to my music.